so they came up with a circular arc again coated with fluorescent substance and there will be a source of the radiation and this will be a slit it will be very narrow and there will be a gold foil okay now there will be fluorescent substance all around so anywhere alpha particle is going then it can be observed and the, it, 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 it was a sophisticated experimental setup in which the microscope was kept in a cylindrical tube that can be rotated so that the microscope the person using the microscope can observe the entire internal wall all over 360 degree so I'm not drawing that and that is not required what the exact experimental setup was the idea was this there was a complete circular arc and microscope can see at each angle from 0 to 360 degree so that one can observe what are the variations in the angle of the of what, what what is the angle of deviation for the alpha particle now it was a tedious experiment so the rutherford passed on passed down the responsibility to his students so the students observed it and they observed that many many alpha particles almost all of them goes undeviated there are few alpha particles which has deviation more than 90 degree and one in a million very little very few completely rebounds back it completely rebounds back this is very important observation that alpha particle can actually completely rebound back from a gold foil now he Rutherford compared it to a situation where eight inch shell, you know, shell that collides with very high energy with a tissue paper and it completely rebounds back. It is similar situation. Now alpha particle is a very high energy particle, very high energy particle. Now it is colliding with a thin, thin gold foil and it is completely rebounding back. Now this was amazing situation Rutherford said this moment of his life was the most important moment of all the experiments he have conducted. It was very important and intriguing moment for him. How can alpha particle with such a high energy completely rebounds back? It seems to be impossible. Using this structure of J.J. Thompson, it seems to be impossible. Alpha particle will never ever to completely rebound back if the structure is like this. Because the electric field, you see, when a body is coming with a very high velocity, very high velocity, you can calculate how much force will it be required to completely stop the body within few seconds. The body comes and cut, it gets stopped. You can find the force. The force has to be very high if the velocity, the energy of the coming mass is very high. Similarly, if alpha particle is coming with a very high energy, that means the force which will be required to send the body just the opposite way will be very high and that can be theoretically calculated. Now you can calculate the force which will be required to rebound back the alpha particle and hence the electric field you can calculate that. Now electric field depends on the concentration of charge. Suppose you have one unit of charge and you have concentrated it to a very small volume. Then the electric field at this point will be very high. If you have diffuse the same unit of charge to a large volume then the electric field close to it will be very less now this you will get to study when you study electrostats in class 12th but for now it will be very intuitive to to know you can feel that electric field in this case will be very less the more concentration of charge at one point the higher electric field will be at points closer to it okay now the force that is required to completely rebound back helium atom will be very high very very high very high now that means that the concentration of charge has to be immensely high a very high electric field can result in rebounding back of alpha particle now very high electric field will come out out of very high concentration of charge now this was clear to Rutherford that very high concentration of charge has to be somewhere and he did the calculation. <coughs> he calculated the electric field required and he calculated the radius of this sphere which will be required to produce that high electric field and the data that he came up with was 3.4 into 10 raised to the power minus 14 meter. Now, if this is the radius, if so little, so small is the radius, 
then required electric field can be produced with very high concentration of charge here so that alpha, alpha particle actually rebounds back. Now the ra radius of the atom of gold at that time was known and that was of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter. It was known then. Now you see this is 10 raised to the power 4 times less than this. This suggests that the concentration of the charge is is in a volume which is 10 raised to the power 4 times less than the volume of the atom. That means the volume occupied by this concentrated charge is almost a point as compared to the charge of the entire atom. This is clear. This is very clear. This is very clear to Rutherford that there has to be concentration of charge. Now he had to come up with other details of the atom. Now from here it will be very easy to find out the other detail of the atom. See. There is a concentrated charge, no doubt about it. Only then, a 3-inch shell can get rebounded back by a tissue paper. Only then. Only then, alpha particle coming down with very high energy can get rebounded back. Otherwise, there is, there, there is no scope for such an incident to happen. There has to be a very high concentrated charge inside the atom. And what else? What else? You see, there could be a situation where the positively charged matter is very highly concentrated and the negatively charged particle is embedded inside a volume of positive charge. Now this space is covered with light density of positive charge. Okay, The center is having very high density of positive charge and electrons are embedded. One can think of such a model. But the problem is, you know, this very high concentration of positive charge will repel other positive charge. Right? Light charges repel and the system will not be stable. So this is discarded. You cannot have positive charge elsewhere. Otherwise, there will be strong repulsion. So there will be only one positive charge, uni uniform positive charge with very high density at the center. There can be no other positive charge around. Okay, this is clear. Now we have to account for the negative charge. Negative charge will be, will have to be somewhere around. Negative charge has to be somewhere around. You know, but the problem is how come they are not attracted towards this very high positive charge? For that, he gave the reason that the force of attraction of this positively charged high density mass and the electrons will act as a centripetal force. And what, what will happen is this force of attraction will actually result in the circular motion of the electron. Now, I don't know whether you have studied already circular motion or not. I'll give you a very, very brief idea about it. You must know that in our solar system, the planets are attracted towards the sun. But the planets don't move into the sun. They keep revolving around the sun. Because that force of attraction acts as a centripetal force. And the sun, instead of pulling the planet into itself, actually rotates the planet around itself. This is the centripetal force. You must know by now that change in velocity is acceleration. And you must know F is equal to ma. Whenever there is acceleration, there has to be force. A change in velocity comes either by the value of speed or the direction. Velocity is a vector quantity. So when a particle is moving in a circular direction, the, in a circular path, in the direction of velocity keeps on changing all the time. It is tangential to the circle. So since the direction is changing, so the velocity is changing. When velocity is changing, there has to be acceleration. When there has there is acceleration, there has to be mass. Now there has to be force. Now that force actually is the force of attraction between these two body. And that force of attraction actually becomes a centripetal force and the body keeps revolving around a central mass instead of getting into that central mass okay so this is the idea now you can get a feel in the, of this when you study circular motion as to how come this force is not pulling this body into the central mass and is able to rotate it around it that kind of feeling you can get when you study circular motion